Hello, my dear student, once again, you're welcome to class for us to discuss 11th session, which has to do with resource and output control in the health sector. The outline of this presentation is as follows. First, we need to understand what is the control function in management. What are the components or what are the constituents that collectively make up the control process? Is control important? If it is important, we will also look at it. And then the factors that actually go into constructing a control system, what are the essential considerations that managers must take note of? The first topic has to do with the control function of management. You remember, when we were learning about manage managerial functions, we understood one of the managerial functions to mean control. What is this control? Control basically is about what? The processes by which we compare standards with results. It is one of the most important functions because of the special role it plays in the management process. So it is basically a process where we gather information, we compare actual results with expected results, and then put in intervention or corrective actions if there is any variance between what we expect to receive and what we have received. So control is very generic in the sense that this is one of the functions of management that ensures that organizations or manager, managers remain on track towards what they actually establish to achieve. So it is important that control exists in every management setup. Every control system has two major types. We have what we call the open loop control systems, and then we also have what we call the closed loop control system. Open loop control system, as the name connotes, they require the intervention of human efforts for them to exist. Unlike the closed loop control system, in these ones, they don't require human efforts, especially when they are being, when, when they are being done or when they are being implemented. So closed loops actually apply to closed systems generally. So if you have a closed loop control, you need to apply to closed system, whereby the, the system automatically regulate themselves. But the open loop actually applies to open system. So you need human intervention to make sure there's regulation at all costs. In closed loop control, for instance, basic components with predefined standards represent expected results. An information collection system that monitors results, they also have a means of comparing actual results to predetermined standards. And then there is that automatic mechanism for corrective actions to be taken where there are differences in the standards and then the results. The second topic that we look at here has to do with the components of the control process. For every control process to be effective, there are certain generic components that must be associated with it. First, there must be standards. Standards has to do with what? What we ought to achieve, barring all circumstances. There must be measurement and comparison. That means that process whereby we compare our work output with the work standards. There must be what? A process of appraisal that it has to do with the assessment or the evaluation that, that goes on between the, uh, the outcome and then the standard. And then there must be an intervention or what we refer to as a change. Intervention takes place where there is a difference between the standard and then the result. So the standards, as I said earlier, they serve as what? Reference point for comparison. Measurement has to do with what? Involving the actual process of ensuring that outputs conform to what? The specifications that were determined earlier. Appraisal has to do with the continuous monitoring of the entire work processes to ensure that there are no deviations from what has been established. And then when these devi devi deviations occur, the necessary steps are taken to ensure that change is effected or the intervention is made for change to take effect. Control is a very important managerial function, as I mentioned earlier. So why is control important? First, it is important because it is that singular managerial function that facilitates monitoring of resource use. It is the one that ensures that abuse of resources in an organization are reduced to the barest minimum. It is the one that also monitors efficiency in the functioning of what? All the organizational processes and the procedures so that the actual results are achieved. 
control also enjoins every manager or leader to consistently monitor, evaluate, and change work processes where the need arises. This singular function also seeks to always achieve results desired if they are not occurring. So in the event that organizations set out to achieve certain results, and yet over the years results are not occurring, control is the function that actually guides managers to ensure that if results are not being achieved, they must be achieved because they, they actually provide that kind of whip, a whip system. They serve as a whip to the management of any organization. Control is the management function that also en en enables managers to ensure that actual, actual output or actual work output or work result are consistent with what has been what predetermined. Generally, pro control is also very important in so many other managerial activities, such as resource allocation, solving problems, decision making, improvement of productivity, and the like. Because of how visible health service organizations are, control is also very essential because whatever goes wrong in health service organizations tells on the public image of the organization. Because health service organizations are public places where everybody can come in without an invitation. In that case, it is important that control is put in place to ensure that the dirty linen of the organizations are not washed in public. And also, if you fail to achieve results, externalities or external forces of regulatory organizations are likely to impose certain serious constraints or penalties on the functional organization, which may take the form of what? Restrictions or reductions in budgetary allocations or punishment or licentious seizure of licenses of operation and the like. So it is important that controls are exacted to ensure the, f the continuous functioning of health service organization. When designing control systems, it is important that certain considerations are made. For every manager or leader, you need to consider the following in designing a control system. First, there are two there are general considerations we call the managerial considerations, and then we have the design consideration. For managerial consideration, we need to think of what? Where is the focus of the control? A control point may be focusing on input or the conversion or the output. Generically, there are these three major aspects of the system. The input point, the process or the conversion point, and then the output point. So the focus must be determined by the manager. The types of measures that are to be used for the standards and monitoring the focus point of the control will all largely determine the degree to which the results can be quantified. So these are all managerial considerations, and who or which authority has the mandate to establish the standards. These are some of the basic considerations that come into the managerial aspect of designing control systems. And the flexibility of the standards. Should the standard be cast in iron or the standard should be flexible? These are some of the consideration, managerial considerations as well. Who has access to the control system information results? Every information must be disseminated. And who should be responsible for this dissemination? And who can receive it? Because every system, be it a, a an open loop one or closed loop one, an information generated, who should have access? Should it be in an open access or a restricted asset? If it's a restricted access, who are the identifiable personalities or authorities that can have access to this control information. And should there be a deviation, who or which authority is responsible for what? Making this intervention or change to ameliorate or to correct the wrongs or the deviations or the variances. Apart from the managerial considerations, we also have the design considerations as I mentioned earlier. The design considerations such as this, first, you have to consider whether the control, uh, control system must, well, must be forward-looking. As much as possible, control system should be forward-looking in order to what? anticipate and detect possible deviations before they actually occur. So a control system must be robust enough not to wait for things to come to the head or to come to a head before actions are taken. They must be forward-looking or they must be very proactive in nature. Control system must what? be very realistic and must be understandable to those who are going to use it. So there must be some kind of harmony between the users 
and then there's the system itself. It must be realistically fit and must be understandable to those who are going to apply it. There must be the factor of accuracy, timeliness, and reliability. It makes no sense or it serves no purpose should a system be designed that may not necessarily measure what it ought to measure or that may not be relied upon or that may be giving them results that do not serve any purpose or that may not be timely. So a collective change can only be based on what accurate information because if the wrong information is produced from the control system, a wrong solution is likely to be preferred, which may be much more costly to the organization had it not, if the organization did not even put in the control system. Of course, the significance and the value and economic value of the control system must also be taken seriously. Is it really relevant? Or is it cost effective? These are important for considerations for the control system. Of course, information appropriateness. The control system must be information appropriate in that the control should not have too little information or too much information. Both ways will be hot and desirable. So the system must have what is, what is adequate and what provides the manager with the sufficient information or the optimal volume of information at the right time, in the right format, and in the right quantity for decisions to be taken. My fellow students, I'm grateful for your rapt attention, and I thank you for this class where we look at control as a manual function. You look at the components as well, its importance of the, the importance of the function, as well as the considerations that a manager must have in designing a control system. Thank you, and let's meet in the next class.